Welcome back, Warrior Family. We're so glad you're here this week. We hope you've had a good week in the Lord. I know we have. Amazing things have been happening. God has been moving, and we're just so glad to be a part of it. And this week, uh, our message is going to focus on revival. Something that is very dear to my heart because, to be honest, it's the main reason that we have moved to Arkansas. So I've been focusing this week on what is revival, uh, how do we get there, what do we need to do. And I think uh, hopefully tonight, through the leadership of the Holy Spirit, we can give a little new insight as to what we need to do as Christians. So I'm talking to you Christians tonight because it's through revival that we're going to be able to reach the lost. And that's what we need to do desperately all around the world. I've been talking to people the past few weeks from all around the world who are in such different circumstances. In <laughs> We're very spoiled here in the United States in a lot of situations. 
but there are people here in our backyard that are also in dire straits that need our help. We need revival. We need revival bad. And my prayer and what God has called me to be a part of is to preach revival, to help people find revival. And that's what we're going to talk on tonight. But before we do, I want to ask the Holy Spirit to come in, to come into where you are and to be with us tonight so that we can truly find revival. If you will, bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for everything that you do for us. Father, I ask tonight that the Holy Spirit would just be here amongst us to be with each and every person that, that watches. Father, that we would understand how we need to be revived. What we can do to bring revival to the world. Not just here, not just our homes, but to the world. But we gotta figure out how to start. Help us tonight, Lord, as we go through your word and we look at your word and we bring this message. Let hearts be moved. Let them be challenged. Let them be encouraged. Father, most of all, if anybody is listening that's lost and undone, I pray that there be something said, Father, that may stir their heart, that they would feel the need to come to you, to find you as Lord and Savior. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So, how do we bring revival? Well, what does the Bible say about revival? The Bible has a lot of scripture that speaks toward revival. And as I was studying this week, thinking about revival, I looked up the definition of revival, and to be honest, um, as I was reading it, a an analogy came to me that really spoke to me even better. Uh, the the it's the definition is renewed attention or interest in something, um, a new presentation or publication of something old. But when I thought about revival, God gave me a vision of somebody doing CPR. I personally had to do that three times. And when you're giving CPR to someone, you're trying to breathe life into them. This is somebody who does not have a pulse and without some immediate attention, they're going to die. I want Christians listening to me tonight. I want you to get in a place where you understand and know that we need new life breathed into us. For so long, we've heard of the silent majority. For so long, we have churches that have grown and grown and grown, but yet our country has got less and less godly. How does that happen? We stay inside our comfort zone and we don't want to get out into the world. We need to, we need a, sh a shift. We need a serious shift in how we think about who we are as a Christian, what we need to be doing as a Christian. So I want to challenge Christians tonight. We need revival. What do we need to do? There's some very old scripture that people have heard over and over, but I feel it's very pertinent. But hopefully we can look at this again and I want you to look at yourself I, I don't want to speak this toward a mass of people right now I want you to look at yourself because that's how it begins second Chronicles seven fourteen. if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now let's get some context about this verse. Okay, Solomon had just built the temple and the royal palace and he heard from God. He had let Solomon know, the wisest man in the Bible who had prayed for wisdom, something I think we all should be praying for right now as Christians. 
so that we can lead. Solomon had heard from God and God told him that there will come hard times. Second Chronicles 7.14 Read that whole chapter. But he said there would come hard times. But when these hard times come, this is what I want my people to do, which are called by my name, Christians. Born again believers that are led by the Holy Spirit. If they will humble themselves. Guys, we have got to get pride in what we think we know out of the way. Fall down on our face before God. And realize that we don't know anything. Without the leadership of the Holy Spirit, without the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and God's word, our knowledge is not what we need to be leaning on. The Bible instructs us to lean not unto our own understanding, but lean unto God's. Humble yourselves. If you have things in your life that you need to get out of the way so that you can go to God in prayer and everything be clear between you and God, get it out of the way, whatever that is. If you have that thorn sticker, that twig sticking out of your eye, get it out of your eye. Ask God to forgive you for whatever it is. If you think for one second that God doesn't already know, he's God. He wouldn't be God if he didn't already know. We have to remove pride. Go before God. Plead to him. Ask him for forgiveness of sins. You know, a lot of people in today's uh, society and church, they don't like to hear about, oh, here we go, repent of sin. Guys, the good news ain't the good news if we don't have sin involved. We don't appreciate those beautiful sunrises if it wasn't for the complete darkness. We have to address sin. It has to be addressed. Humble yourself before God. Repent of your sins. Seek His face. When I, There's times when I get in prayer, I get completely lost in prayer and could sit there for hours in feeling that overwhelming love of the Holy Spirit. We need to seek his face, turn from our wicked ways. When you truly let the Holy Spirit be what leads you in your life, you will turn from those wicked ways. I'm gonna tell you right now, there are things that I used to compromise on thinking, well, that's not really a big deal, so I'm not that worried about it, but now I look back, uh, there's no way I'm watching that or there's no way I'm going here because I know that's not right for me as a Christian. I will hear from them. I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. This is what we need to do. We need to refocus ourselves. Psalms 51.10 Create in me a clean heart O oh God, and renew a right spirit. This is something that we need to be crying out to God. Psalms 80, 19. Turn us again, O oh Lord God of hosts. Cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Psalms has a lot of scripture. Psalms 85, 6. Will thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? We have got to bring ourselves to a point of where we want to be surrounded by God's love, where we realize that we need to do better as a person. On a personal level, Christians, listen to me. Revival starts right here. Go look in the mirror. You'll find out where revival starts. And I'm gonna say this too, something that, that really came on me this week, men, Take your rightful place in your home as the leader of your household. We were at a Bible study together last week with uh, some wonderful men that I, I meet with. And one of the gentlemen uh, made a comment that just really stood out to me. Guys, I know uh, everybody, a lot of people use the Version app on your phone to read, to make notes. I do uh, have it on my tablet. 
but there's nothing that can substitute for when you sit down at the table and you open your Bible and you're sitting in front of your children and your children see that. If you have children at home, I encourage you, get that Bible out, begin to read. Begin to pray out loud. Let them see. Men, lead in your home. Because I guarantee you, if you're leading in that way, a lot of people don't like it when you start talking about wives submit, but a wife is not going to care one bit if she has a godly husband who is leading his, living his life the way God instructs. Wives, I would encourage you as well, join your husband. Let your family see that as a unit, you are trusting in God. We need a shift in our hearts. If my people, my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Guys, he will heal our land. He will heal this world. He will bring revival to us. And we're going to get to this, but there is a reason revival is so important. The reason why I believe that we have got to get our minds and our hearts set right to God so that we can change. Because we need to change. How do we accomplish it? If you read through the Bible... There's a lot of different verses on how we can accomplish this, but one uh, that stood out to me this week was Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, when you look at that verse in context, it's talking about don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to drink. Don't worry about what you're gonna, how you're going to dress. When you seek God above everything else, it is a complete shift in perspective. When you put your trust in God and you seek Him above all things, everything else is going to take care of itself. Christians, I want you to listen to me. I don't watch the news I can't stand to hear about the politics anymore. I can't stand to hear about the COVID anymore. I can't stand to hear about any of it anymore. And some people may think, well, how, why do you, you need to stay informed. I, guys, I'm informed. I, I got my Bible right here. That's my information. That's what I put my trust in. I don't put my trust in any government anymore. I put my faith in a higher power because I've seen what he can do. We have to change our perspective. I have used this so many times, but when Jesus told Peter to get out of that boat, the only thing that stopped him from walking on water all the way out there is because he looked at the storm and the waves and it caused him doubt. Stop doing that. I'm begging you to stop looking at the storm, stop looking at the waves, stop looking at how the devil uses the world to cause you to live in a life of fear. Stop doing that. Get in the Word of God. Shift your perspective to where what you rely on is Him. Where you rely on God, you are seeking His face because when you seek His face and you seek the kingdom of God first, all these things shall be added unto you. And it's not just what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what you're going to wear. It's peace, love, joy, happiness. All of these things that are that you see on TV and the news and the world that's causing you to have fear and doubt will melt away. I promise you that. If you will do one simple thing, seek you first the kingdom of God. What happens when we do this? What happens when we humble ourselves, we truly go to God, 
ask him to remove anything out of our lives that stands between us and him from having that relationship again, that powerful relationship with God through the Holy Spirit. What happens when we seek his kingdom first and we change our perspective on how we're looking at the world, not looking at the world through the world's eyes, but looking at the world through God's eyes, how God sees it, how he tells us to look at the world, looking at God for our guidance, the Holy Spirit. What happens? All we got to do is look at the book of Acts. Now, I've said this for several weeks. My wife and I have went through the book of Acts probably three times, and we'll probably go through it a whole lot more because I strongly feel led to keep reading this book until it is pounded into me because this is what I, I believe with all my heart for us as Christians to find the power, the freedom, and the joy that God has for us, we have got to the return to the church of Acts. They did not doubt. Those apostles did not doubt. Peter didn't doubt when he told Tabitha, rise up. We have got to get back to that. What happens when we seek God first? Acts 1, 12 through 15 then returned them to they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day journey. And when they were come in, they went into an upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon Zealot, and Judas the brother of James. These all continued, and I want you to listen. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication. Supplication is the action of asking or begging for something earnestly and humbly. When was the last time that you fell on your face before God and asked earnestly and humbly, God, please bring revival to my soul, bring revival to my heart, put a fire in me, let the Holy Spirit put a fire in me that makes me want to become a better Christian and serve you for the rest of my life and win people to Jesus. When was the last time that you prayed like that? I want this to challenge you. I'm not trying to call anybody out I am speaking to myself as much as I am anybody because I want revival. I want revival. I want to feel the Holy Spirit and dwell in me stronger than it ever has. I want to be able to walk up to people and then feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. That's what I want. And I want to walk away from people and then go, I don't know what it is that guy about him, but whatever it is, I, I want that. They had continued in one accord in prayer and supplication. They're begging God in prayer with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus and his brethren. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of names together were about 120. So, oh, I don't know how in the world I, for some reason, somehow, I had went so many years and I had not noticed this. There were 120 people in one mind and one accord in prayer and supplication. They were in one accord. They were all crying out to God. They were in the upper room. Now we can shift over and we look at Acts chapter 2, <laughs> verse 1 through 47. We won't read all those, uh, but there's, there's just a few that I do want to read. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. There again, you hear that word, one accord, together. 
is through corporate prayer. Listen to me. Every single one of us praying together in one accord. We can bring revival. We can bring revival to our own hearts and minds. We can bring revival to our families. We can bring revival to our communities. We can bring revival to our country. It starts right here inside you. You have to search out yourself. In one accord they had gathered, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like fire as it sat upon each of them. Let me go back. I missed the verse. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. I don't know about you, but I want to feel that. I want to feel it all the time. I have experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And let me tell you, next to my experience of salvation, there has never been anything that has hit me more powerful than my experience of baptism of the Holy Spirit. God opened my eyes to things that I never thought possible. The spiritual realm is real, angels, demons, everything, the battle that rages, the importance of having the full armor of God on every single solitary day has become so real to me because of what I now see in the spiritual realm and the battle that rages every day. Mighty wind. It filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were many tribes in the town. And as these men went out to speak, as the apostles went out to speak, they were speaking to people that were from other tribes, from other areas, and they were able to understand them. And they're like, are these guys drunk? It's the middle of the day. How are we understanding these people in our own language? The Holy Spirit had come. The day of Pentecost had come. And thousands of people were saved. This is what I want to see happen in our churches, in our communities. I want to see it happen with individuals so it happens to the churches so that finally we get outside of the four walls of the church and we get out into the communities and we really start to see revival hit. There are a lot of people out there that are not going to step foot inside a church. We have got to take, it's, it's like being in a field hospital. We've got to get out to the field and we've got to take it to them. It's time to get back to some of those old ways, those old tents in a field, on the, right on the side of the road, wherever we got to do it. We have to spread the word of God. We have to get it out to people. Ephesians 5.14, where he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead. And Christ, <laughs> Christ shall give thee light. Be a light to this world. Get in God's word. Put it in your heart. Be a light to this world. Be a light to a lost and dying world. There's a lot of people out there that have no hope, guys. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Right now, the church should be shining brighter than it's ever shown. As with as much despair as they try to put out in media right now the church should be trying should be shining brighter than it ever has i'm challenging you tonight to humble yourselves cry out to god seek his face above all things we too can experience a time in our lives where the holy spirit moves in a mighty way and it's heard around the world instead of all this bad news 
being out there, they won't be able to not put it out there of this amazing thing because so many are involved. I truly believe that. I truly believe with all my heart that is what God called us to do and why we are here. To bring revival to this area and it will spread from here. Why is it so important? Why is it essential? 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Now there's a lot of people that don't like to they don't like the doom and gloom talk. I'm not that kind of person, but I'm I'm reading scripture here. This is the word of God. Verse 2. For men shall be lovers their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Man, I just described our society today. One thing I want to look at, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. There are a lot of people that go to church on Sunday, but that's all they do is they just go to church on Sunday. I ask you to examine your life. If you are one of those people who have a form of godliness because you think you do because you're going to church and you're paying a lot of money to the church, it's not going to do you any good. I want to call up those warriors. If you were once involved in church and something happened that got you away from it and you're not involved anymore, I ask you to stand up, become that warrior again. Seek God's face. Don't seek the approval of men. Seek God's face. Follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. With everything you do, stay in God's word. Get your guidance from the Holy Spirit, not people. If you rely on people, we'll mess it up every time. Rely on God. but denying the power thereof. Form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Do you realize how much power we walk around with every day that we don't even give recognition to? I was talking to a brother the other day. It's almost like we, we feel like we're driving around in a Pinto when we're strapped to a Pratt & Whitney jet engine. There's power in the Holy Spirit. Claim that power. Search the word. Cry out to God. Humble yourself. Let's do this together. Let's become a people that pray together. Let's become a people who seek God's face above all things. If we will stop paying attention to all this media blitz of bad news, turn it off. Get it out of your head. Focus on God. We can change things. You think, no, it's too late for that. It's too late. It's just going to be what it is. You know what? They may still keep playing it, but that don't mean you got to buy into it. Let God have control of your life. Let the Holy Spirit rule you. Let the Holy Spirit rule your footsteps. Second Timothy 4, 3 and 4, For the time will come... When they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, they shall heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned to fables. Doctrine needs to be put away. The only thing that needs to be happening in churches today is the Bible, the Bible preached, the word, just preach the word. 
I don't need your doctrine. We don't need doctrine. We just need the word. Preach the word. Let the Holy Spirit teach you the word. I don't care what denomination you call yourself. I'm asking you to please step outside of that denominational viewpoint, that filter, that doctrine. Just get in the word and ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. He is the ultimate teacher, not your pastor, not me. I'm giving you the word. That's all I can do. I'm just spreading seed here. All we need is the Word and the Holy Spirit. James 4, 8, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. And purify your hearts, ye double-minded. It's a reminder. We've got to draw close to him. Tonight, I'm reminded of something that, uh, and I'll say this real quickly, I'm reminded of something that I didn't learn until I got here to Arkansas. There was a lady by the name of Corey Tinboom, and I don't know if you've heard about her or not, but Corey Tinboom, uh, during World War II, her and her family, they, would, they were hiding Jews when the Nazis would try to come looking for them, and in the process of doing that, uh, they were betrayed somebody ratted them out and they were taken to uh, prison and she has a book called the hiding place and there there's actually they made a movie after it and uh, i've watched it um it's powerful and it's um it's amazing what that lady went through and she had her moment too where anger began to take over but she she got refocused on god and after coming through that experience and everything she saw, she started her own ministry. And in the early 80s, she was doing an interview on TBN. And now I understand she's not from America. She looked into the camera and she said, there's going to be a revival and the center of a Christian movement in the United States will begin in Northwest Arkansas. Now again, I didn't know anything about this until after we moved here. And when I did, man, it just charged me. I mean, it supercharged me because it's almost a confirmation because I had no, I'd never heard anything like this until then. A few years later, she came back and up in uh, Harrison, she was standing in a field and it says that in her, in her her spirit, she saw angels with drawn swords, five deep as far as, far as her, her spiritual eye could see. Now, for those of you that have never experienced anything like that, when you when the Holy Spirit opens your when God opens your eyes to the spiritual realm, things look different. I've experienced that myself, and for her to stand there, she saw in her spiritual eye, as far as she could see, angels, five deep, with their swords. She saw it as a form of protection over the Ozarks. And it goes on to say, flying in a plane over the region, she said that the Spirit of the Lord was over this area and that it would become a place of refuge I want you to do me a favor please and continue to pray for us because we want to see revival come let's pray for each other through corporate prayer let's pray for each other continually in prayer that we would be revived and we would see revival come to our hearts so that we can see lost people saved why is that so important? I don't want to see anybody go to hell. If you are listening and you have never asked Jesus into your heart, everything I've just talked about is an effort 
so that we can become better Christians, so that we can get to you, so that you can have eternal life through what Jesus did on the cross. So tonight, if you're not saved, Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt believe in thine heart, if, you, if thou shalt confess the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. All you have to do is ask, believe, and confess. Christians, I want you to start praying. I want you to continue praying for revival in your heart, but I want you to start praying for those that may be lost and undone. If you're out there and you feel like you need Jesus tonight, I want you to just bow your head, and I want you to pray with me, and I want you to pray believing this prayer. Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God, and I confess you. I thank you for what you did on the cross. I believe that you did it to save me. I believe that in three days God raised you from the dead. I'm asking you tonight to become my Lord and Savior. Come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. Save me, Lord. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, then we are so happy because you are now a child of the King. Reach out to us here at Broken Word Ministries. By all means, please let us know. Please let us know how you're doing. We would love to help. Our phone number is on our Facebook page. We've had several people reach out to us through that. Message us. We have people around the world that are watching and we're so thankful. We're going to see a change. We're going to see a shift. We're going to see God move. Christians, it's time. I'm challenging you tonight. Become the warrior that God asked you to be. Be what God wants you to be. Fulfill the purpose that God has for you. We love you and we thank you. We're praying for you. Pray for us. We'll see you next week. We love you.